are you welcome to another video this is battery management part six it regards the use of wire wound resistors and fast switching for the electronic enthusiasts out there you will have already guessed what this video is going to be about so there's my display but you saw I've got two PCBs made up so I've just got two voltages and using the ADTs from Mauser that's address one and that's address two so I haven't got that other multiplexer with a rat's nest of wires coming off it. Got two for the communication, two for the microcontroller power to the boards, and over here five volts and ground. So six wires. I've made some mistakes. So here's a closer look at the PCBs. This is the main, and all the other batteries will have this non-main board. Power comes in here, 3.3 and ground from the microcontroller, and two communication lines for I2C, data and clock. What I thought, I'll simply use this flat flex cable, run it from each board. Have one connector on the main board, two on every other, so power and communication in, power and communication out. Four wires. I went to bed after clicking buy now with JLC PCBs, and I forgot. Hang on, I need six wires, not four. I forgot about the power up here. So this is an early prototype, but it's got lots of issues, so this will be scrapped. So if, if you're using these batteries and you're following my design and you want some unpopulated PCBs, I've got a few spare. I only respond to that offer this week, because I'm sure in a week or so they'll run out. But they're only suitable for this size battery, 122 mil centers. So that was my first mistake. Four wires instead of six. I couldn't get this four-way connector with contacts on both sides. So you have to plug this in this way. It's actually a good job. Now initially, a day ago, I plugged this in to here. And fortunately, my microelectronica program refused to power up the system because it said there was a problem with the voltage. What I didn't think, it's fine designing these on a computer. When you get the boards, <laughs> I totally didn't think this second board is turned 180 degrees. So that meant all the wires were back to front. The power was going to the ground, the ground was going to the power input, and the communication lines were also back to front. So lucky for me, this connector has the pins on this left side this connector has the pins on the right side. So I was able to take this four-way flat flex cable and turn it around. Twist, put a twist in it and plug it in there. And then that one powers up. So that gives me my two boards. But it's temporary. I've already designed a board with a six-way connector and as proof, I haven't actually, I've not paid for the PCB yet. I've got lots of work to do. As proof, here's some flat flex connector cord, 6 pin. What's another mistake? These 7 watt, 3.3 ohm resistors. I chose wire wound. I chose 7 watt, they're a bigger package than the 5, so you can dissipate the heat faster. The other mistake, I use these 8 pin port expanders. So I2C communication comes in, gets isolated by an I2C isolator, and I've got my I2C port expander. One of the I.O. ports on this expander turns on a FET to discharge this cell. And when you see the LED coming on, that's turning on momentarily. The second output runs to this boost converter, similar to the one I showed you the other day. This boost converter is stepping the 5 up to 12 because this FET needs a minimum of 10 volts on the gate to get it out of the ohmic region so that it's fully on and it's super low on resistance and can handle something like 380 amps approximately. So this turns on, turns that FET on, that FET grounds this hole where bolt is going to come out, grounds this hole to the main ground. When this boost converter is turned off, it will turn off your output ground. That's the idea. So if I connect this light bulb, so I've connected this 12 volt light bulb, 
there's the 12 volts and that's the ground on that hole on that PCB. So if I turn my power supply off, the circuit pulling this FET in has turned off, so it turns off the output. When it's charging and you've got over voltage, this will turn off. When the batteries, when one of the batteries is at the minimum spec, this will turn off. So I said I've got an LED on that boost circuit. When it gets the signal, the LED turns on. When the signal's turned off, the LED goes off. And the same with this resistor here. When it's on, the LED's on. When it's off, the LED's off. So that's turning on and off. Yet my bulb is staying on. Something I just didn't think until I assembled the PCB and tested it. If I connect this ground, so remember with the isolated power supply, the I2C isolator, I can ground any one battery at any one time. If I put my scope lead on the gate resistor of this FET, I'll show you what the voltage is doing. So it's not staying on long, so we can't see the maximum voltage it's actually getting. It's actually coming up to 12 volts peak, but because I'm turning it off sooner after it started, we're not seeing it on scope. But so it's coming up to 12 and then down to 5.45. Why is it not turning off? So it's a silly mistake, uh, I didn't think about it. The port expander is enabling this boost circuit. However, when it's not enabled, it's a boost circuit, so we've still got 5 volts running through this coil. I just did not give that a thought. All I have to do is fit either a transistor or a solid state relay or some device to cut off the 5 volts. And then that will isolate the output. So just a small bit more work and I've made some mistakes on this PCB just with this connector. So this is a, a working prototype. The port expander. They've only got one address. So how can I turn this resistor on and not that one? The answer is I can't. So I need to get a 16 pin port expander. However, <laughs> I've got loads from RS. So I'll redesign the PCB using these. And with these, there are three address pins you can either put to power or ground. So that gives me eight combinations of address. So the connector, not enough pins. I didn't give it a thought. This one is 180 degrees from this one. The next one will be 180 degrees. The next one, 180. So I have to figure out that in these connectors and use six wires, not four. These resistors, my circuit on this main board the port expander, when one pin came on, they all came on. And it's the first time I've used this 8-pin port expander. This first port expander is faulty. Fortunately I had four. I've ordered four for four boards. So I've used one of the spares and put it on here. And I'm not short. So that means if these boards didn't need modification, I'd be down on one chip. But then I suddenly realised Hang on, one chip, same address, same problem with the ADC. I'd be going backwards, building all the boards with one port expander with one address. Go to the 16 pin, you can set your own address, up to eight different addresses. This port expander can only deliver 50 milliamps per IO pin. It's got four IOs. Some of the other brands can only deliver 25. I've got a fan 3111X, which is a FET driver. You put a signal to it, it can deliver, it can sync or source over one amp to a FET. And, and again, another modern smaller FET from Nexperia. You can pass 60 to 80 amps on this, depending on the gate voltage. I've got 5 volts and only want 1 amp. So this low profile, modern FET, super low on resistance, something like 4 milliohms. I wanted this to turn on quickly. So I've got the 50 milliamps coming from the expander through the fan 3111, delivering up to an amp through this gate resistor here. Turns this on and pulls this side down to ground. Or when everything was staying on, 
because of my faulty port expander, I had the scope on this. Let me show you what I found. There's a quick look at the schematic. So that's my port expander made by NXP, 50 milliamp out, others are 25 or less. That runs to this fan 3111 by On Semiconductor. That runs to my modern Nexperia FET transistor, and channel FET transistor, 10 ohm gate resistor, 10k to ground, shorts at my eBay battery for a 3.3 ohm 7 watt resistor. Fast switching on and off, yes? Is that what you want? This is at discharge FET, turning on and off. Looks fine. Let me capture it. There we are. Capture it again. Here it's turning on. That's the gate to source capacitance charging up. This plateau, which is easily recognizable there, the Miller plateau, that's the gate to drain capacitance charging. Once that's charged, the voltage just keeps on rising up to whatever you put on the gate. But it's actually switched on here. Uh, this after this plateau is finished switching on. Hopefully you've seen my video so you should understand that. So this scope, 50 nanoseconds of division. So 50 and half of this, this FET is on. So call it 75, 80 nanoseconds. Let's have a look at the drain. Look straightforward. 3.3 volts being pulled down the ground, back off again. Right, capture that. What on earth is that? Oh my god. Capture that again. There we are. Fast switching to a modern FET, modern gate driver, and switching a wire wound resistor. It may as well be one of those inductors I was messing about with the other day. 28.7 volts. What, from 3.3? Yeah, this is a coil. <laughs> Fortunately, my resistor is 40 volts. Any less than this could destroy it, although the pulse is short-lived. If I expand this out, this is 20 nanoseconds of division. So that pulse there, well over 20 volts, that's over 20 nanoseconds. And so the start of that peak, so the start of that pulse, 20, 40, 60 nanoseconds. So could any FET withstand over voltage for 60 nanoseconds? It's actually quite, it's a big spike, but short lived. If you want to go to the extreme, you'd put a snubber network like resistors and capacitors or change the resistor to some sort of metal film, carbon film. When you start wanting non-wire wound resistors, they can be expensive. I didn't see this cheap one here on Mauser. This is only 5 watts, 7 watts you go to wire wound. This one, 4.5 watt, 3.3 ohm, great. I'll have some of them. They are ceramic composition. Oh, £29 each. Normal ones are pennies. £29. What, just to get rid of that spike? That spike can cost a lot of money when it starts blowing up your fat. I just didn't give other compositions a thought. There's plenty of schematics out there that use these same resistors, slightly smaller maybe, but I wonder what, if they're being switched on and off quickly, I wonder what the drain on their transistors look like. So that leads me to another question. The port expander can deliver 50 milliamps per pin. The fan, the on semiconductor fan 3111 can deliver one amp. This is turning on and off quickly, so no gate loop ringing or anything like that. It's not hanging in its ohmic region. So how does this FET work directly from the I.O. expander? So this fan chip, I thought I was getting the 3111C and the inverting input you tie it to ground. However, this is the 3111 X and the inverting input is a voltage reference so I had to lift the pin and tie it to 5 volts and I thought do I even need it so on the second board the IO expander is running the FET directly 
through a 100 ohm resistor to limit the current from this IO expander. It's a 50 milliamp, so, so 5 volts divided by 50 milliamps is 100 ohm. That will slow the transistor turning on, and for the gate to source, I've taken out the 10k and put a 47k. Let me show you this circuit on the scope. Remember 50 milliamps max from the IO expander. Capture this. There we go, let me do that again. I wasn't ready. Right, so the last one was turning on in 60 nanoseconds or thereabouts. So if I line this up, transistor turning on. Again, that's the gate to source capacitance. There's the Miller plateau. The transistor will be fully on somewhere here and then that just continues to rise up to the gate voltage. We are now on 100 nanoseconds of division. So we are, the last one was, what was it 70, 80? That's 100, so 100, 200, 300, I don't know, 350-ish nanoseconds. So many times longer to turn on. Now let's look at the drain. Right, turn this down a bit, capture it again. Yeah, it just fits in there. Right, so this is the slow switching. So we are on 50 nanoseconds of division. It's definitely more narrow, so we've got less energy there. But look at the peak to peak, 14.7. So just by turning the transistor off slowly, we reduce this spike. Turning the transistor on and off slowly is the last thing you want to do in a boost converter. But it's the first thing you want to do in this circuit where you're turning a resistor on and off. 0.57 milliohm, so not 3 or 4, 0.57. That's exceptionally low by any standard. 380 amp logic level MOSFET. So my 5 volts turns this on, but it says logic level 380 amp. Oh, look, data sheet 30th September 19. You can see it's a modern device. That's why I went for it. If you want to use wire wound resistors, they're an excellent coil too. Hopefully, you found this video interesting. Hopefully, you learned something. Thanks for watching.